All right, good morning everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Today I'm talking about POTS and autoimmunity. Uh, we've had volume issues, so if you can hear me, I would love a comment saying that you can hear me. So uh, today I'm going to go through the presentation. Unfortunately, as we continue to have some technical difficulties, um, you won't be able to see the PowerPoint presentation I put together. I don't know how we can meld this. Maybe you all come back and redo it because this is such an important topic. But I know a lot of people are interested in it, so we'll go with what we have uh, at this point. So relative to POTS and autoimmune, first we have to understand blood pressure control. I think that's important. Again, to summarize POTS uh, before I go into blood pressure control, uh, POTS is a condition that commonly results in individuals having tachycardia. They experience symptoms of anxiety, tachycardia is where your heart beats too fast. Uh, they have symptoms of dizziness often, or they may have brain fog, they may have headaches, commonly comorbid symptoms of gastrointestinal problems, as well as uh, mast cell activation syndrome, and it can be associated with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome as well. There can also be associations to small fiber neuropathy. So with that being said, we have to talk about blood pressure control. And so with blood pressure control, we need to know that a lot of the physiology of blood pressure control comes from our understanding of people bleeding out. So think of if I cut my arm, for example. And if I cut my arm and have an artery spewing out blood, my body has to go into high alert to save blood to keep my blood pressure up because if our blood pressure goes down, then we don't get blood to the brain. That's a very bad thing. And so we're going to see at the level of the kidney that there's less blood going through into your kidneys. And so there's something called basically the renin angiotensin system. So then renin is going to be produced and it goes to your liver and cleaves angiotensinogen and angiotensin 1, and then you convert to angiotensin 2. And so a lot of blood pressure medications work on angiotensin converting enzyme, um, and angiotensin 2 has an effect in your lungs. So there's all this complex physiology. There's also aldosterone, which I'm going to talk about in the hormone broadcast. Aldosterone uh, helps your kidneys to basically save certain electrolytes and get rid of other ones. So it's going to save sodium and get rid of potassium, basically, is what aldosterone does. And if your aldosterone levels are off, then maybe your blood volume is going to be off. And this is a big reason why POTS patients around the time of menses tend to have more severe symptoms. I also talk to POTS patients where their symptoms are good some days and bad others. And that ties in with the autoimmune component of POTS, which has now been demonstrated, which I'll talk about more. And we also have to understand the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems. They are part of what's referred to as the autonomic nervous system. So autonomic basically means what? It means automatic nervous system. And so it happens without you thinking about it. And so when that occurs, you have the, or well, not when it occurs, but basically the sympathetic nervous system is your quote unquote fight flight. Your parasympathetic is your rest and digest. So you've all heard of, for example, people who meditate a lot. You know, you have these monks who can slow their heart rate down to next to nothing. What they're doing is they're activating their parasympathetic nervous system, taking their body into such a quiet state that they're so relaxed, rest and digest state, that they can basically program their heart to go down to next to nothing. Versus someone who just saw a car drive through a restaurant the front of a restaurant and you know you're sitting there trying to eat your lunch then your heart rate's going to be going at you know 180 beats per minute it's going to take a long time for that to calm down because there was a lot of adrenaline secreted when adrenaline is secreted we're trying to raise blood pressure we're trying to raise heart rate and that's the phenomena that a lot of POTS patients deal with Understanding that physiologic loop is really important to the discussion on autoimmunity because we're finding that the immune system is attacking basically receptors of neurotransmitter chemicals, basically. They're not really neurotransmitter chemicals entirely, but basically the immune system is attacking receptors for acetylcholine and adrenaline, and when that occurs, the communication between your brain 
down through your spinal cord to the sympathetic chain ganglia, out to your adrenal glands or out to your lower extremities to get blood back up is not working correctly. So that is hugely important, hugely, hugely, hugely important. And so if you have a chance, and if you guys can let me know that you're hearing me, I would love it. But if you have a chance, go and look at a diagram of the autonomic nervous system. And you'll see um, things that you're probably familiar with, but you just haven't maybe thought about that much. So um, I remember reading about the Revolutionary War and uh, when I was a kid and, you know, they talked about, I think it was Paul Revere, if I remember correctly. Anyways, you know, individuals who were fighting for their lives, fighting for the country, and uh, the hair standing up on the back of their neck, pupils dilating. What are those? Those are sympathetic fight-flight reactions. What? Your heart beating faster, your bronchioles in your lungs, bronchial dilating. They're opening up to get more air into your system, into your bloodstream. And then your heart beating faster and then digestion shutting off when we're in a fight-flight state. So for all of you POTS patients who have you know, digestive symptoms think that your body is in a state of fight or flight excessively. You're in a hyperadrenergic state, adrenergic referring to adrenaline. So you have way too much adrenaline floating around to compensate for the autoimmune issue. And then that can put your gut into a state of fight or flight, which might be part of the reason why you have irritable bowel syndrome, as an example. Maybe your bladder's not working as well. Maybe you have chronic urinary tract infections or you have chronic overactive bladder. All these seemingly disparate symptoms are totally related. And that's a travesty because our, our medical system is kind of, and nothing against our medical system is fantastic, but it, in order to make the medical system work, they had to create specialties. And so the specialties, you know, you have a bladder problem, you see the urologist, you have, a, you have tachycardia, you see the cardiologist, you know, you have gastrointestinal problem, you see the gastroenterologist. And with that, then nobody lots of times puts it all together with a POTS patient. So hopefully by looking at a diagram of the autonomic nervous system, you'll have a better idea of how things are, are connected. So just know that in POTS patients around 2018, it was demonstrated that POTS patients, a significant percentage of them, in fact, they said most POTS patients in the Journal of the American Heart, Heart Association, uh, most POTS patients have antibodies, antibodies are immune chemicals, to angiotensin II type, type 1 receptor. So basically angiotensin II type 1 receptor, most POTS patients have antibodies to that. So what does that mean? Basically, we don't have to go through all the physiology of angiotensin II, but angiotensin II is an important compound needed to regulate your blood pressure. So here they found most POTS patients are making antibodies to angiotensin II type 1 receptor. So we're making immune cells that are blocking the effects of this blood pressure modulating compound that's natural in our body. So that's an issue. And then the autoimmune basis for postural tachycardia syndrome. Uh, I believe that was the seminal article. Let me see, was that the one published? Oh no, that was one of the first articles published. Um, on this matter. And they basically found that a high percentage of POTS patients were making acetylcholine receptor antibodies as well as adrenaline receptor antibodies. So at that point, then they started doing investigations and saying, well, are there other comorbidities for autoimmunity in POTS? And the answer is yes. So um, you may want to be Get, maybe your doctor is going to test you for lupus, or maybe your doctor is going to test you for celiac disease, or maybe your doctor is going to test you for Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where the immune system attacks the thyroid. That's Hashimoto's and can be associated with normal thyroid hormone tests, which is the most common test that your doctors are going to run. Um, and so, but it's not one to one. And what we're finding is, is that the autoimmunity in POTS, we don't have a common commercially clinically available test for autoimmunity in POTS available to date based on the current literature. Are there ones at the Mayo Clinic? Yes, but the newest ones coming out, they're saying we don't have these available yet. But what we're finding is that as you distill down the biochemistry and when we look at adrenaline receptors and acetylcholine receptors, they're referred to as G-coupled receptors, and they have 
many different components to it. So it's kind of like they may have four elements to, if I can get my hands right in the screen. So maybe the coffee cup is one, and then my hand, this hand is one, and this hand is also another piece to the G-coupled receptor. So there can be like four components, and they're finding antibodies maybe to one component of that G-coupled receptor. So when we were, or when they were doing studies earlier on, looking at autoimmunity to these receptors, they found that they were missing the antibodies because their biochemistry and their cellular biology techniques were not exact enough to depict these antibodies in POTS patients. So that's why I say, um, you know, if, if you go and get tested for an antinuclear antibody or you go and you get your thyroid antibodies checked and it comes back negative, don't be disheartened that you don't have an autoimmune problem because the current literature out of uh, the Journal of the American Heart Association, the title of the article, if you want to look it up, is Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome is associated with elevated G-protein coupled receptor antibodies. And in that article, they went on to say that their observations provide further evidence. In most cases, POTS patients have at least one elevated G-protein coupled adrenergic autoantibody. They found it in 91, or excuse me, 89%. I've been saying 91%. It's 89%. So they found these G-coupled adrenergic adrenaline autoantibodies in 89%. And both adrenergic and muscarinic antibodies, muscarinic or acetylcholine receptor antibodies, um, in a, a large percentage. I think they found the muscarinic antibodies in around 53%. <clears throat> so, so really, really interesting. Um, so you probably want to look up that article. It's very, very interesting. And they even said in their opening statement, uh, POTS is a disorder often misdiagnosed as chronic anxiety or panic disorder because the autonomic failure in these patients is not severe. When they say it's not severe, I mean, it's severe for you, but it's not as though you're, when we have autonomic neuropathies, for example, or severe, severe dysautonomia, these folks like can't get out of bed at all. So maybe you're up walking around, you look normal. Unfortunately, there is a gender predilection to where it's mainly females. It tends to be a younger demographic of females. So when these younger females walk into a cardiology office, and when you look at the demographic of a cardiology office, you're mainly talking about people probably above the age of 55 uh, who may have diabetes and they may have high cholesterol and they may be overweight. It just... It, it's a mismatch for the cardiologist. So lots of times the, the statement I hear all the time is the doctor will say, well, why are you here? You, you look fine. There can't be anything wrong with you. But you know there's something wrong with you. And now the newest evidence is showing there absolutely is something wrong with you. And 89% of you have autoimmunity. Um, but again, it's not going to be picked up with a test that we have in routine clinical practice at this point. Maybe in five years, we'll have this autoimmune POTS profile available to all doctors and you can get it at LabCorp and Quest and things like that. But right now it's just not there. In this article I just mentioned, uh, the one, the more recent one out of the Journal of the American Heart Association, they also looked at, um, when they were looking at all these antibodies, they found that some POTS patients have like antibodies to everything, almost to every adrenaline receptor, most components of the acetylcholine receptor, so some autoimmune patients, let me say it this way, some POTS patients have more autoimmunity than others, but it seems that 89% of them have autoimmunity. So uh, again, I'll redo this video if I can, maybe next week, um, if I can merge this screen and screen effect so you can see the slides that I put together. But if you have fatigue, if you have aching muscles, if you have heart palpitations, you have shortness of breath, independent of something like COVID, you need to be checked. Uh, joint hyperflexibility, nausea, easy bruising, cognitive issues, irritable bowel syndrome, gastritis, anemia, Raynaud syndrome, you know, depression, arthralgias, those are very, very common symptoms reported in the POTS patient world. So, Anyways, uh, thank you all for watching and have a great Saturday and I will be back next week with more information on POTS.